Well, hi, thanks for joining me here in my shop. Hey, we're going to be taking a look at this meter. I've had this meter in my shop for a couple of weeks now. I've been using it on and off. I'm going to take a little closer look at it. It has some special features which could make it very attractive for a shop like mine. And what kind of a shop have I got here? In case you've never seen any of my videos before this one, uh, it's a vintage radio repair shop full of vintage equipment. Quite the opposite of this meter, in fact. And, uh, you know, that's great. I have a lot of fun with all this stuff, but it's taken me a long time to acquire it all, to learn how to use it all, or to half learn how to use it all. <laughs> and I have a lot of trouble with this vintage equipment. It's old. It's old stuff. But that's where my fun is. Now, if you're thinking about starting into this uh, fixing old radios and stuff like that, and you're going to start acquiring equipment, you might be thinking, well, maybe there's a magic meter out there for 50 bucks, maybe I can get myself something which will do pretty much what all this equipment does. Probably not, but this meter is a bit of a look at that. So let's get a little closer look at the meter. So, uh, you know, as a multimeter, this is a perfectly fine meter. It has a large display on it. it, has the various features you find on a typical multimeter, including frequency. Uh, it can read uh, capacitance, it can test diodes for you, uh, continuity, resistance, all that stuff is here, of course, in this meter. But it has a few other special features. So one of them, you can see it says graphical multimeter. One of them is you can graph the signal. Like just pushing this button, up comes a oscillogram, I guess would be the right word for it, of the signal you're looking at. And uh, another feature is you can store readings has a memory in it and there's a way to store readings and another thing it can do is it can do what what the meter calls relative measurements and really what's going on there is you you apply the probes to a test voltage of some sort you push this relative button I think it's this one it subtracts away the value that it's appearing on here it subtracts it away now you, as you stay in this relative mode the future measurements you make are made with that initial measurement subtracted away. So there are some occasions where that can be of use. But So those are the three uh, interesting special functions of this meter. The memory, uh, the relative function, and the waveform display. Of course it's not displaying a waveform. The probe's just sitting here like this. Let's start with some real simple stuff. And then we're going to move up to using my signal generator and put this guy to the test. Let me hold this down, flip back to regular voltage readings right now. Alternating current voltage readings. So first thing to do, very simply, is stick the probes in an outlet. Sure, why not? This is an auto-ranging meter. And I have to have an outlet right here. And the voltage on that outlet is right there, 123.3. So let's see, we'll compare it. So this guy's saying 124, this guy's saying 123.3. Which one's correct? I couldn't tell you offhand, of course, but I believe this one's probably more correct than this. Good enough? Sure, they're both good enough for the kind of work I do in my shop. Let's take a look at the waveform. Just push and hold this. Nice, stable looking waveform. It's a little flat on the bottom. Could just be the way the processor inside here is, is processing this curve. Notice the frequency is given over here, 0 .59, 0 0.059 kilohertz at 60 hertz, of course. And the voltage is still reported up here. This is kind of handy in a way. One screen is giving you voltage, uh, frequency, and a display. I'm going to turn these probes around and just see if that flat spot moves to the top. It's just kind of weird that there's, it's not perfectly symmetrical. having some trouble making a good 
continuous connection here in the outlet. There, I think I got it now. You can see it takes a moment to resolve a nice smooth curve there. The first drawing of the curve was all jagged. Uh, that's a very important observation now that I've just made it because it explains what's going to come next. So there you are, 60 hertz, looks fine. Now I'm going to put this away. So we're not going to be doing any more with high voltage. Now I have another meter here for comparison's sake. This is a meter I use all the time. It's just another multimeter. I've had this for many years and it's I'm going to connect it to the output of the signal generator and I'm going to connect this to the output of the signal generator here. Try and keep everything connected. This is my scope, my scope lead here. Everybody hooked up. Every instrument is seeing exactly the same thing. There we go. One point three nine nine, one point three eight. Again, that's certainly close enough. I don't know which one's exactly right, but what does it really matter? That's really a very small variation. And uh, currently, the frequency we are looking at, which I'm not even sure what it is, it's uh, 126 hertz. 125 hertz. Now, I have another uh, frequency counter up here I can take a look at. This one here. So this tells me the output frequency of this device regardless of the output power of this. I'm going to be varying the output level of this this guy. This thing will always react. It's on another. It's getting a different signal from that signal generator. So I can always count the frequency up there. And now we're going to put on the uh, scope display onto the screen here. You can see a little bit of everything. Just bear with me one moment here while I make a little change on my computer and bring it up there. So there's an interesting thing right there. I didn't take a little bit of time to stabilize the display on my scope. The display on this scope was stable right away. It automatically stabilized it. Um, I can select the uh, time base here on my scope myself. And make a choice as to what I want the time base to be. This is automatically set on this meter. I believe you can you can you can change it. You notice it took two or three rewrites to clean up the screen there. Now the thing about doing this is this there's there's no there's no scale on here at all. So there's no time base you can read out or anything like that. So again, the frequency is uh, 125 hertz. But let's see what happens uh, when we raise it up. And then this, this meter may not be able to track it as we raise the voltage, or, or maybe this one, I don't know. Raise the uh, frequency, rather. We'll go up by a factor of 10. Now the frequency is 1.2 kilohertz, 1250 kilohertz. It's the same number appearing up here on my frequency counter up here. I know I've never ever even tried this meter on. Hey, why not? I've never tried this one. <laughs> I have a meter that can do this and I've never used it. That tells you something right there about using these kinds of meters for doing certain things in a shop like mine. But I have a lot of alternative ways of measuring 
frequency there. I like that. Okay, but if you compare the two displays, let me just speed this up a little bit. You see, there's nothing smooth about, about this display anymore. So the frequency we're at is 1200. This is supposed to go uh, to 5 megahertz. And we're nowhere near there yet. Let's go up another factor of 10. Okay, I'll change the time base on the scope. The scope is having no trouble. Now if you notice the voltage has dropped to, to 1.4 volts here, but this meter is saying 0.44, so we're probably out of the frequency range of this meter. We're at 12.4 12 kilohertz and this is showing the correct frequency. So my guess is correct frequency, probably the correct voltage here and this meter is, is out of the picture already, he's the loser. Just before we put them away, can, can you do the frequency thing? Yeah. Now in the manual it says you can only successfully read frequency here as long as you have a 2 volt signal. Well, you don't have a 2 volt signal, but it is reading frequency. But the display looks, looks terrible. It's not in any way indicative of the signal coming in. This wouldn't help you one iota looking at that. 12 kilohertz is a fairly high frequency for uh, radio work. Usually, radio work that I'm doing, a lot of it is AM radios, broadcast band, so you're looking at 500 kilohertz to 1.5 megahertz for the radio band itself. Local oscillator goes a little higher, just somewhere below 2 megahertz. And you're looking at I mean, IF frequency and other things that are much lower. So, um, in many cases, you really don't need to get up to 12 kilohertz. To uh, you wouldn't would not be interested in a 12 kilohertz signal, but that's not always the case. Let me crank up the voltage, and we'll see if this cleans up. So, uh, we're thinking we're at 1.4. Let's go up. It's not cleaning it up much, is it? So let's see if we can figure out if this voltage is correct here. So it's saying it's 3 volts. This is almost certainly 3 volts RMS. And what we have on the scope, of course, is actual waveform in peak-to-peak -peak volts. It would be it's 2 volts per division here. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's about 8 volts peak-to-peak. Okay, 8 volts peak to peak is 4 volts peak, 0.7 of 4 is around 3. So I think probably this is very accurate still. I think the voltage is accurate up to 20 kilohertz. Let's go up another 10. So the voltage coming out of the signal generator hasn't changed because you can see on my real oscilloscope it's still the same peak to peak voltage, 8 volts. The uh, meter is reporting 2.9 volts now. And the waveform has just turned into gobbledygook. As the uh, frequency has decided that it's O dot L. O dot L. I looked all through the manual to find out what O dot L means. In the manual it refers at one point to dot O L as a uh, uh, indicating you have a shorted uh, diode during a diode test, but no reference to what this actually means. So we can just guess either the frequency has gone too high for this meter or the voltage has gone too low, even though it says 2.9. So, so far, if you're not too impressed with this display, then you're exactly where I am on it. It seems to work nice at 60 hertz. Stick it in an outlet and you, you can see it. Now, i got to be fair to this meter. Okay, this is not built for fixing vacuum tube radios. This meter is built for fooling around with digital circuits and uh, low voltage uh, applications. It has another feature in it, which is 
kind of helpful. Um, let me just see if I can kind of show that uh, easily. So I just need another lead here. Just one moment. Okay, so we're going to test an alarm feature that exists on this meter. Now, as I said before, this meter is really built for low voltage work, not high voltage vacuum tube radio work or vacuum tube, you know, guitar amps, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so it, in its mind, a good voltage to set the alarm off at is 24 volts. Well, in my shop, a good voltage might be 300 volts or something like that. But well, actually, 24 is not, not too bad an idea. Let me show you why. Let's test it first. We'll leave it on this setting. So it's displaying, uh, this is just a DC voltage coming from an adjustable power supply. It's set to 20 volts. DC. Not bad. So, now it did beep, didn't it? Why did it beep? Probably beat because I had it on the wrong setting. And uh, there we are, 20 volts. Now I'm going to turn the voltage up on the supply and watch what happens, or listen to what happens when I cross 24. Okay, so I'll leave it up at 20, 25.8. So it beat three times and it put this lightning bolt symbol on there. So if we pretend we're testing a circuit that's more than 24 volts, we get an audible alarm. Now this isn't really that bad an idea, even though 24 volts is kind of low for a shop like mine. When you're working on an old radio like this, if, if you know enough of what you're doing, you know when you're working with the high voltage part and when you're not. At least you think you know. Now this meter, with this feature, if you put the test leads into a radio like that, and you think you're going after a low voltage, like you're expecting 10 volts or something, and your eyes, of course, are not going to be on the meter. They're going to be on the radio where you're working the probes into the radio. You accidentally, instead of contacting the 10 volts you think you're, you're, on, you're, you're going for, you connect to, let's say, the B plus on the radio, which might be 250 or 300 volts. This meter is going to beep at you. And it's going to tell you, hey, you've connected to a high voltage. Um, it might be helpful uh, in, in terms of improving your, your safety. It, it's harmless in a sense except they're going to hear that beep, beep, beep quite regularly in a shop like this. So, so that feature is not, not too bad, but of course it really is intended for um, transistor type uh, circuitry and whatnot, where 24 volts is kind of high. And uh, so bottom line on this meter, from what little uh, I, I've shown you here, I mean, I haven't shown you all the features of the meter at all. Um, bottom line is, this is an okay meter for doing your basic functions like this one. You might get away a little bit with using the graphic display, but generally no, it won't help you much at all in this kind of work. I guess in a digital circuit, when you look at this, you uh, the uh, graphical display, you'd be more likely to see uh, you know, square waves for digital switching circuits and stuff like that. Um, Again, how helpful would it be for that? I don't know. That's not what my shop is all about. But that's what this meter's been aimed for, I assume. So very inexpensive. Uh, if you don't have anything, some, something like this might be helpful with its oscilloscope and frequency, uh, frequency display. Okay, let's get back to doing some radio repair work. <laughs>